So I, I, I gotta ask, I, I'm, a, I'm in sales, I'm in, I'm in complex B2B sales. Like why is sales enablement important? So sales enablement versus training, right? Training is teaching you the truth. It's teaching you how to manipulate the product, what the product does. You can go out and read white sheets and find out about the product. You can use the product and learn how the product works, but that's not the same as selling the product. It's not the same as telling the story about the product. So if you wanna read the white paper, that'll tell you what it is. If you talk to the product manager, they may tell you how it does it or why they built it, but not what the customer is gonna do with it. So sales enablement is about a condensed version of training because salespeople are busy. Your job is to make money for the company. So your time is money for the company, right? We wanna tighten down as much as possible how much we take of your time to make sure it's very efficient but we need to teach you not just what the product is, what it does, but how to sell it. How should I be thinking about like sales enablement as far as the various groups that s seem to either be part of it or touch it? So I've been doing sales enablement uh, in one level or another uh, for about 10 years now, maybe a little bit more. And in that time I've worked for and with sales and marketing, and I've worked very tightly with learning and development, the training team, but I haven't worked for them specifically. Some sales enablement teams report to L&D, some report to sales, some report to marketing. And there are some key differences in those things. With training, their job is to teach you the truth. And so if they're running a sales enablement program, they want to teach you the truth. But we need them telling good stories, not just right. reading a VCR manual, right? That's, that's not gonna inspire customers. That's not exciting. That's not why customers buy. Right. It's also it's also something customers are going to find anyway. They're doing most of their buying process online before they even talk to me. Right. So that's the kind of stuff they get online. They don't need me to spout it or repeat it. Right. So you don't want just a list of facts in your sales enablement. Again, right. this is teaching you how to sell. So sales, if your if your enablement team reports to sales, sales is a very tactical group. Right. Their job is to close business. They have a quarterly number. They have a monthly number. They may have a weekly number. Their job is to keep closing business over and over, but they get that very short term kind of tactical mindset. That's good. That's critical to what they do. But if you're looking at sales enablement and building that longer term roadmap of, but what are we going to do next year? What do we need to do in two years? What are the customers going right. to be looking for? What's not on the truck yet? You don't necessarily want your enablement to reach too far out, but you have to plan for those longer horizons and sales doesn't necessarily want to support that. And also, if you get a tight quarter and you report to sales, it's all hands on deck and you're out selling to customers. You're not sitting at home making videos, you're not writing scripts, you're out talking to people because that's what sales does, right? And then marketing is about telling stories, but they tend to work for the corporate group. It, it, you kind of get some downside to each of those groups L&D wants truth, but not necessarily excitement. Right. Sales wants short-term. Marketing has to include all the products. Now the flip side is L&D, you're gonna get really great information. Sales, you're gonna be very well connected to what the customer wants and how they're gonna sell it. And marketing, you're gonna get great stories. So there are pros to each side as well, but you just need right. to be kind of aware of those characteristics and ideally you balance those. So sales enablement is where all of those come together and are balanced out. Ideally, yes. So if it's too heavily controlled from one group or if someone comes up through one of those things and you know comes from L&D and is very much a trainer and has always built certification tracks and now owns sales enablement, you may get sales enablement that looks an awful lot like a certification track as opposed to storytelling. Right. If you get marketing, you may get some really great stories but they aren't necessarily exactly what customers want and they include lots of different products that don't necessarily matter to the customer, things like that, right? So you want, you want to make sure that your enablement team comes from one side of them. Uh, personally, I like marketing the best. That's where I work right now is in the marketing side. But ideally, you'll stay very tightly connected to the learning and development team and the sales team so that you kind of pull all of that stuff in. The sales will keep you grounded in what's going to make money and how you're going to stay in business and the L&D is gonna keep you grounded in you need the truth to, to act as a solid base for your stories. That brings up another point. So in an earlier video, I uh, pointed out to especially complex B2B salespeople that before they move to their next job, they need to look at 
the sales enablement group, not just the comp plan, not just the product mix and whatever, but they need to look at the sales enablement group because if there's no sales enablement group or it's really crappy, then they're essentially left to onboard themselves and learn everything themselves and that's months or even a year out of their career before they really start firing on, you know, on all cylinders. So what should people like me be looking for? in a sales enablement group? What makes a great sales enablement group? Uh, the easiest way would be to make sure that they have contacts in the learning development team and the sales team and the marketing teams, right? So if they're in regular communication with all those folks and those are part of sort of their checkoff for the materials, for their planning, for their strategy, you're probably in good shape. Have you talked to the salespeople yet? Have you gone out on ride-alongs? Do you know the sales leadership? You need to not get a blank stare and hopefully they can tell you what sales is doing, right? What sales problems are out there now? <clears throat> because of course that's what enablement is doing. You're trying to cover over any gaps in the sales process and the selling motion um, and help salespeople move forward. If they don't understand where those gaps are, you may be in trouble. Uh, this has been super helpful and I really appreciate it. One last question before we go. So uh, talking about sort of a, sort of a, a let's say a more holistic approach and you've got marketing in the mix and you've got L&D in the mix and even sales in the mix. As a salesperson, in an ideal situation, what does that look like for me? Like what's my day-to-day -day or, or what's my what's my experience with sales enablement gonna be like? What are, what, are, what are they doing that's like better for me? Or why am I, what am I getting out of it? So I guess what I'm trying to say. What am I getting out of it if it's being done right? If it's being done right, then it's part of the flow of what you do for your job. It's something that you put into the flow of your day because you choose to, right? So in some companies, sales enablement, I believe you mentioned in a previous video, it's a mandatory video that you have once a quarter or something like that, right? If you have to make it mandatory, you've probably missed the mark. Um, if you make good sales enablement materials that are easy to get to, that are engaging, maybe fun, but at least very useful to help you do your job, you don't have to make it mandatory, you just have to make it available. You know, don't give them 90 minute videos to say seven minutes of content. Give them six and a half minutes of content and then stop talking. Yes, make it, make it very simple, make it very tight, make it useful, and people will absolutely love it. They'll be better at their jobs and you'll be happier as well because you're making really amazing materials. Uh, okay, this has been great. Uh, anything else you wanna say before uh, we wrap up? Uh, no, not particularly, but this has been really fun. Thanks for inviting me in as a guest. I do appreciate it. Oh, it's been it's been great. And I really I really appreciate um, uh, Dell for reaching out and offering you as a guest. It's been amazing. Of course. Thank you.